Hey everybody, it's Casey here from Luxly, here to go over the brand new Luxly Composer app. And uh, you can see that the interface here has changed pretty dramatically from the previous version of the conductor. And we're going to be releasing this on iOS and Android simultaneously. We are really excited about what we have here, so uh, let's get started. First thing on the interface, you can see we have these three modes on the left hand side. We have modes, we have mix, and we have saved. All of these we'll get into shortly. You're going to have your lights connected over here, so you're going to be able to see what we're doing. And then look for lights down in the bottom. Now you have also have the option to add a demo light, just so you can take a look around the interface if you don't have anything connected or you can't be shooting at the moment. So what I'm going to do right now is we are going to start by looking for lights and just hitting this button down here. See the little bar and you can see it is loading all of these lights that I have. So for right now, just going to connect all of these. And you can see we have our demo light. We have a Viola Mark II. We have a Luxley Timpani. We also have a cello and an original viola. And you'll be able to see the differences between all of those and the abilities they have. So first thing, you'll notice that my cello down here is actually named Tester 2. Now we're going to want to change that name so it's a little bit more clear. So I'm going to click on the little arrow on the right hand side and our fixture menu is going to pop up. Now in the fixture menu you're going to be able to see your temperature and you're going to be able to see your current battery level. This is going to show up for all of them. So what we want to do first is we want to change the name of the light. See I have it marked as tester 2. Now you'll notice that the cursor is going to be all the way to the left. Don't worry about it. Just start typing and it will replace the text. There we go. Luxley Cello. And here we go. We are ready to start rolling. So each one of these I can just click through and you'll notice that they're all selected on different modes right now. And that is because this will pick up exactly where it left off the last time you connected to the lights. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to create a group just so you get a little handle on this. You can see we're in single mode right now. So if I go to group, I have one there already. I'm just going to get rid of that real quick. And all we're going to do is go to create group down here. You can see it's going to have all of my connected lights listed. So let's do this. Let's throw in the Viola Mark II, the timpani, and the cello. Create a group here. Let's call it Gen 2, because these are all going to have the built-in special effects. And then we have our All, and you can see all of these lights are now selected, along with the demo light that we had before. Now to avoid confusion, let's just get rid of this demo light. You can see we're back in this fixture menu, and we have our options. Change name of the light, reset connection policy, and disconnect light. Now I'm going to disconnect. So. Getting back into the fixture menu here, you can see all of our options up top here. Now we're going to reset our connection policy. Now what does that mean, you might ask? Resetting the connection policy when you connect one of these lights. So let's say we disconnect the viola we have right here. So let's just throw that one out. But we want to connect again. I'm going to look for the light. Just like on the original conductor app, you're going to have the option to connect yes this time, not this time, or you're going to be able to always connect. If you select always connect, then no matter what happens, you're, it's not even going to prompt you to connect. It's just going to automatically show up on the left hand side in your connected lights. So what you can do is reset that connection policy and it will prompt you the next time that you connect to the app. Okay. So we have our lights connected. We've created our Luxly Gen 2 custom group. And you can see we still have that little arrow on the right hand side. So click that. This is now going to tell you each light that is connected. And if you have ones that are not connected, you'll be able to see which one it is. And here you can change the name of the group. You can delete group. If you clicked on it just to check the status, just click off and you're all set. So let's start going through the modes down here in the bottom of the screen. So we have CCT. This is pretty standard. 
you're going to have your slider right here. You're able to drag. You'll notice that you have a little bit of a color gradient so you can get an idea of where you are. If you ever needed to enter in a custom color temperature, you just click on the number over here and it's going to give you a prompt. For this light in particular, the minimum is 3000 Kelvin, the maximum is 10,000 Kelvin. Now you're going to be able to do this in increments of 50. So let's say I wanted to do 3950. And there you see it's already up. Now we have down here some of these presets, so you can just quickly go to some of the different ones. We're going to be adding more uh, as time goes on, but we wanted to make sure that everybody had a chance to play with this light as quickly as possible. So continuing on, let's talk about HSL. This is your hue, saturation, and lightness. Now you see we have this nice little color graph right here. And all you do is just drag around and you can see the numbers over here changing as I do it. That's just going to give you an idea of where everything is. You can also see up here on the bar, you're going to be able to get a little bit of a preview of what color is going to be output. Now, some of you may remember the RGB sliders on the Android version, and unfortunately it never got ported over to the iOS version. Now, in the new Luxley Composer, you're going to have access to this again with another interesting feature. So let's move our reds all the way up. You can see we're up to 255. All of these ranges are going to be 0 to 255. Now you can see we got a nice pure red, but if I start moving the green, you'll notice that something happens in the red and in the yellows. The actual colors are shifting. That is so you can see what the effect would be if you were to change that particular color. So you see when I reduce the red here, it's going to get super green. Move it back, it's going to be more in the yellows. Same thing down here with the blue. Mix that in, we're going to get more of a lilac. So we can move that down, remove the green, and then we have a nice little magenta. Now, just like on CCT mode, you're going to be able to tap, enter in anything you want. You'll be able to create custom gradients like that. Now there is something that I'd like to go over. We now have these little folders in the upper right hand corner. That is to create a favorite. So let's say we do that, just save that as a lilac RGB. This goes into your saved folder at the top. You can see we have it down here. Now, just by clicking on it, it's going to immediately apply it to any light that we throw at it. So that's going to be nice. So before I continue on, I want to go over just some of the general user interface when it comes to these different lighting modes. So you see up top here, we have our intensity bar. This is actually going to be what's output from the light. Once again, you tap on the number, you're going to be able to do any sort of entry you want. Now, when you save using this little save folder, you'll see, pull it up here, it's actually going to save your intensity as well. So for this RGB mode, you got your red, green, and blue levels. You have your name, you have the date that it was created, and the mode that it was created in. So we're going to go back. Now we're going to move on to gel mode. Now this is for your newer generation of lights. So you see you have your CCT bar up here, so you're going to be able to change it to any of the custom color temperatures. Once again, tap it, enter it, you're all set. And then here are all of your custom filters. We have it sort of in a visual layout now, but these will all follow the order that you are used to with any of your lights at this point. They are all going to be exactly the same. So you're just getting a little visual representation. It's going to say which filter is up top. And once again, you can just add it to a favorite here. Okay, so for the next one, let's move on to our effects. Now, these are going to be the same type of effects you will find on the timpani, the updated cello, and the viola mark II. These are all going to correspond to the options that you have on each one of those lights. For the viola mark II, you are now going to be able to set them. And once you play them for the first time, so let's do candle in a storm. So now that light is now going to use this preset and is going to be saved on the device. So even if I disconnected the Viola Mark II now and I were to use it later on, that setting is now 
in the light. So you can just start and stop it on the unit. No need to connect it to the app to get back to this favorite. So you see CCT chase, color chase, explosions, fire, fireworks, lightning, paparazzi, pulse, siren. Some of these you're going to see a little picker right here. We're just going to click and drag. That will get you to where you need to go. And finally, strobe mode just like you would anywhere else. I have a little color preview, it's available. And once again, you're able to save this as a favorite. So you're able to keep it for later on if you need it. The interesting thing you're seeing here with the original viola is that we only have five special effects and not the full amount that we have on the others. That's because there are no built-in effects on the viola. So these are actually just going to be app-based effects that you are now able to use. You might remember these from the original iOS and Android conductor. So you're going to be able to do some custom effects here. These are only going to be saved on the device itself because they need to be connected to the app to actually be able to be used. So to start and stop an effect, you press the play button up here, stop it again, same way. Here is another handy new feature. This is app effects. These, much like what you would use on the original Viola, are going to be new effects that, while they're not built into the units themselves, are going to be able to be used on these newer lights and the original Viola as well. Right now, this is a often requested one, which is TV mode. So what you're able to do here, set your base CCT. You can allow it to change only a certain percentage. Intensity changes, changes per minute, all all nice options. And once again, anywhere you see a number, you're able to just tap, enter in a custom information. Here's where things get interesting. This is sequence mode. Now, this mode, think of as a DMX board. You are able to do a couple of really interesting things. So what you're going to do is you're going to be able to control each one of these lights and send it different commands or groups. Now, you're going to hit the little button here on the left, which is going to add a new card. Now you're going to see save mode, duration, target. So let's go to saved mode. So it's going to pull up your favorites. So let's say I wanted to do this lilac RGB. We're going to click done. It's going to say it's going to do. So now we're going to click on the duration. Now you're going to have two options for the duration. There's either going to be manual, which means you're going to have to step from one card to the next, or a timer. Now the timer you can set in milliseconds, seconds, or minutes, depending on what you want. Once again, tap the number, make the slider, whatever you need to do. So we're going to keep this on manual for right now. So the next one is targets. Targets, you're going to be able to either start with your current selection, so whatever light you're using at that moment. You're going to be able to choose a single lights. So when it says single lights, the reason is because you can choose either one or you can create a basic grouping right there without having to create a separate group. But then you also have your predetermined groups that you set up back in the other menu. So we're going to send this to the new group. So we have our first card right here. Let's set up a second card. So this one you can see I already have some different modes selected. We just used RGB mode so we can set a fire effect. So this is just something that I saved earlier and what we can do, let's set a timer and let's set the timer for one second. And let's set our target to a single light. Let's do the timpani that we have connected. Now I can set up another card, do a different effect, say the TV mode that I have. We'll set that as a duration as well for one second. And we'll target single light the viola mark two. So when you hit this play button right here, remember I put this saved card on manual. So it's not going to go anywhere until I hit one of these two arrows, either forward or backwards. Now that it's playing, you can see it takes one second to go from one to the other. So I have to tap, and then it's just going to transition on its own. Now I hit this little repeat button, it'll start back at the beginning, wait for me to prompt it, and then it'll start. 
what you'll notice is that when the targets are different, it's actually only going to affect that light. Here I have the timpani selected, here I have the viola mark II. Once it moves to the viola mark II card over here, the timpani is still going to be following its last command. So in this case, it's going to keep doing the fire effect until I tell it any differently. Now, let's say I wanted to rearrange it. All I have to do is tap and hold, and I can drag it to any other position in the sequence. And if you decide to change something in the sequence, don't worry about it. Just go back into the menu, and you can change the timer. So let's go back, do one second. Go back, hit repeat, and you can leave it playing, and it's just going to keep doing it. And finally, we have our camera mode. Just hit the button. That'll be your color picker mode like you had previously. Okay, I want to go over something else real quick, which is our mix board. Now, we finally have a full-fledged mixer. So what you're able to do is take each one of these lights, set them independently from this screen, and then you're able to still have your master. So what this is going to do is going to take whatever settings you have here, and then you're going to be able to dim down from there. So you don't have to worry about don't have to worry about going back and doing each light individually. You're going to be able to actually just set these and then fade in, fade out, whatever you need to do. And then going back to your save modes here, see you got a nice big delete button on there. You can just get rid of it or you hit the trash button over here and that's going to delete all save modes. Last thing with mix mode, you see I have mix mode here set up for each individual light in single mode. I can also go to my groups. So if I have a group set up, I'll be able to do multiple groups and have those mix as well differently. And then I still have the master here. All is going to be the same thing as single. You're going to be able to see everything there. So that's basically it, guys. Uh, this is our new Luxly Composer app. Hope you like it. We've worked very hard on it. Like, subscribe, ask questions. We're here for you. This is Casey from Luxly. Have a good one.